Late night comic David Letterman signed off more than three years ago after decades of laughter. Barry Mitchell has more on a new book that goes inside the final weeks of the iconic television show. The uh, only thing I have left to do for the last time on a television program, thank you and good night. On May 20th, 2015, David Letterman said goodbye to late night TV after a 33 year run on NBC and CBS. One super fan was so sorry to see him go, he wrote a book. I really wanted to capture the memories of the people who worked there. Scott Ryan is the author of The Last Days of Letterman. Welcome. Thank you. And with us is a real treat. We have Jill Goodwin, one of the writers from Late Show with David Letterman. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Why now a book about Letterman? It's been three and a half years almost since the show went off the air. It has been three and a half years, but the world has changed so much in that time. I really wanted to capture the memories of the people who worked there. And this is an oral history. Correct. So it is, in their words, exactly about each episode of the last six weeks. We all knew we had a job to do, but there was a different kind of electricity in the last six weeks. We all knew that these shows were special. We all knew that everyone was trying to bring their best to the table to make Dave really proud of the end of his run. Writer Jill Goodwin. Maybe today I'll get to meet Dave. <laughs> I started as a finance intern and was able to move to the production side of the show and then from there, the writing side. If Dave's tickled by a piece that you had on, you really don't care about if the audience laughs or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the win. Like right, if right. the audience is silent, but you can tell Dave is right. genuinely tickled by something, then that's all you need. Dave likes something that would catch him off guard a little bit. He, he just appreciated stuff that was like a little off. I saw one of your fake commercials and I laughed out loud. Discount retailer Dollar Tree is buying competitor Family Dollar for $8.5 billion. One, <laughs> two, three, four, 149, 150, 151. My take on his style of comedy early on was sarcastic, sort of put down and detached. When he started, like at NBC, he was kind of had this college young guy persona, and he he kind of morphed into more like of a comforting, fatherly role that was you know we could go for laughs, but you know, um, after terrible things happened, we could go to him for like words of wisdom. And, and we're told that they were uh, zealots uh, fueled by religious fervor, religious fervor, and if you live to be a thousand years old, will that make any sense to you? Will that make any goddamn sense? <sighs> and that's where his, uh, his comedy skill really meshed well with his, I mean, he was a fantastic broadcaster. And that's where th those kind of worlds just you know, made magic, in my opinion. Did David Letterman request the celebrities that were on the last few weeks? He was really interested in the music guests. Oh, darling, darling, stand by me. In fact, he requested Stand By Me, which he used to sing to his son, Harry, and they got Tracy Chapman to do that. Stand by me. It means a great deal to me. I'm so happy you could do this for us. Jill, what do you remember about the very last show? I kind of sneaked down to the, the theater and stood in the back of the house during the standing ovation and the clapping, and I just remember I'm never gonna forget this feeling. <laughs> and then everyone just kind of walked around like, what, it's, all, it's really all over? And we partied after that and that was it. <laughs> and Scott, what do you remember about the last show? I watched it at home in the dark in my underwear. Our thanks to Stand Up New York at 236 West 78th Street for use of the room. Thank you both. <laughs> I'm Barry Mitchell, you're watching Arts in the City. <laughs>